Okay, bonding in metals. We talked about ionic bonds and covalent bonds. Here's our little brief talk about metallic bonding, the electron C model. So metals have low ionization energies. Um, it's easy to remove electrons. So we can think of sodium metal as being an array of sodium ions. Each, each sodium atom has donated one electron to this ocean around it, the sea of electrons. These electrons are not attached to a specific atom or ion. They're just free to move around. The sodium ions stay together because they're attracted to this negative C. They're not so crazy about that crazy little, lost my words. They're not too happy about the other sodium ions because they're all charged positively and they repel each other. But this negative electron C is attractive to them and so they stay together. This model explains conductivity, malleability, and ductility of metals. Elec uh, metals can conduct electricity because these electrons are free to move around. They, they are not tied to a particular atom and so they can move and electric current is the flow of electrons. Malleability, you take a, a hammer to a piece of metal and it dents, right? It doesn't shatter into pieces. It dents. And so metals, because of how they're put together, because this attraction is fluid in a sense, they can deform without breaking. If you do that to an ionic compound, it will shatter. And it'll often form nice straight lines, um, little crystals, but it'll shatter because you start to separate those things a little bit, the ions, and they just lose it and come apart. Here, the electrons move, and so it can deform. And then, let's talk very briefly about ozone and how awesome it is. Okay, so, here is a Lewis structure for ozone. Oops. If the bonds are blue, I think the lone pairs should be blue. It's kind of squished. Sorry about that. Resonance. Okay. So in an ozone molecule, these bonds are actually like a one and a half bond because it's an average of these two structures. In oxygen, you have a double bond. So up in the atmosphere, there is an ozone layer and we've got UV light coming in from the sun. The UV light is strong enough to break a bond in ozone, which is weaker than a double bond. When it breaks one of the bonds in ozone, then you get oxygen plus an oxygen atom. So this absorbs some of the UV light that's coming in, makes um, oxygen molecules and oxygen atoms. Well, these oxygen atoms aren't very stable, and they're going to recombine and form ozone again. And so the ozone layer um, is destroyed and reformed continuously, aside from us shooting things up into the atmosphere. Anyway, that's how ozone protects us.